Hey guys, it's coming in my review for Soul. So what Soul is essentially about is we center on the character of Joe Gardner. He is a middle school jazz teacher. He's always had a passion for jazz and his life has never really gone in the direction that he wants it to. That is until one day when he gets a call from one of his former students that this highly respected uh, saxophone player, Dorothea Williams, is taking auditions. And so he jumps at the opportunity to play in her band. Everything seems to be going great. He gets the gig and right when it seems like everything's going great, he ends up falling through this sinkhole and basically on the verge of dying he ends up in this place called the great uh before and basically when he is here he is quickly paired up with this uh entity known as 22 and through this he goes through a very spiritual and very philosophical journey that helps him get in touch with who he is a little bit better and really does a lot of self-reflection as to how his life has been so far. So Soul overall, I was so hyped uh, for this film. I mean, look, even before the pandemic was a thing, this was in my top five films uh, of the entire year in terms of anticipation levels. I mean, it had really had everything it needed for me to get excited, whether it was the cast, whether it was the director, whether it was Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross doing the score, you know, just it, and it being a Pixar movie. I mean, there were just so many things to get me excited here. And I was so excited, in fact, that in preparation for this film, I rewatched every single Pixar movie that I could and watched Cars 2 for the first time. That movie's a piece of shit, but that's a separate discussion for a different uh, review. Check out my Letterboxd reviews where I reviewed basically every single one of them. Some of them I might not have put a review for, but for the most part, most of them I did provide some sort of review. This ended up being a yearly thing. I, I intended to do this for Onward, and then it's, uh, you know... I, I didn't get it in time for Onward, and then Soul was announced back in June, so my intent was to finish it then, but then it kept getting far pushed back farther and farther and farther, and it turned out to be a yearly lawn watch-through of all the Pixar movies because of it. Go going through their filmography just reminded me how much I love and adore Pixar and how much they're able to tell these really good stories that most of the time are geared for families but have far deeper meanings to them and are able to relate to basically all audiences in that way in a way that most animation studios can't and I've just always found them to be very special and like I said especially on this rewatch it just gave me a newfound appreciation for them as a studio so you can imagine going into Soul a film I was already very hyped for I got that much more excited knowing what they were truly capable of doing here knowing the highs that they could really hit when it came to this film and I really thought again similar to a lot of movies that we weren't going to see this film, unfortunately, this year. But it was announced that it was going to come out on Christmas Day on Disney+, Plus, and I was so utterly excited. It became the main thing that I was most excited for on Christmas Day, not spending, not eating food, not getting certain presents and things like that. Even this great microphone that I got, uh, that was not the thing I was most excited for. It was to sit down and watch Soul, and so I finally was able to, and after watching it, I could not be more impressed. Soul absolutely took my breath away in so many ways. This is a film that truly comes around every once in a while. I honestly was not prepared for how great this film really turned out to be. I mean, Soul is one of the most effective and emotional films that I've seen in a very long time that really cuts a lot deeper than you're really expecting it to and is very different from a lot of Pixar films of its kind and is a film that I just have not been able to stop thinking about since watching it, but we're just getting to right now starting off with the voice cast. And look, it's Pixar. We expect for them to have a really great uh, voice cast here, but this is easily, I think, one of their most stacked ensembles yet. I think truly every single performance in this is top tier. Everyone really does kill it within this film. But of course, we have to talk about Jamie Foxx here, who does play the main lead of Joe Gardner, and he is phenomenal in this film. This is easily, I think, one of Jamie Foxx's uh, best performances to date. It's mainly because Joe Gardner as a character is someone that can be very hard to portray. This is a guy that is so obsessed with jazz. Everything that he does, um, it's about jazz. Everyone he talks to, it's about jazz. He lives and breathes jazz music, and 
That's something that I think Fox had a really good understanding of. But what he also has an understanding of is that Joe Gardner, beyond that, is kind of lost in that way. And I think he did a really good job with showing that in this film. Joe, as a character, goes through a very visceral sort of transformation in this movie. He really undergoes a very significant arc that you don't really realize he's going through until the film ends. And I think Fox just did such an incredible job with getting in touch with that. There are so many scenes that hit me so emotionally and I found to be a character that I really could relate to in many ways and it really is because of Fox's portrayal here it just it feels so real it feels so authentic and it feels like one of the most human portrayals that Pixar really has ever done you honestly forget you're watching an animated character because Joe just feels so deeply real in that way I feel like we all kind of know someone like Joe Gardner out there maybe we ourselves are like Joe Gardner and I think that's something that Jamie Foxx just did such an incredible job with getting in touch here. There are points where he's very funny in this role, but he also isn't afraid to get really emotional and really just get into the depth that this character really does have, and I just thought he was absolutely phenomenal here. I loved his performance from top to bottom. It's easily the best voice performance that I have seen uh, this year, and I, I think he just did such an incredible job in this film. But the performance that I don't think is getting enough love is Tina Fey, who plays 22, which is a very hard role, I think, to pull off, and she gives one of her best performances that I've seen from her in a long time. I mean, Tina Fey is a very talented actress, but I just don't think recently she's really had that project that really fully utilizes her as an actress, and this film absolutely does, because she is just so incredible as this character of 22, someone who really has a very dim view of life. She feels very inexperienced. She's very cynical in that way, but she as well goes through a very significant arc in this film, and Faye just does such a good job of showcasing it. You really do find your yourself getting attached to 22 because of Faye's performance and I really like what she ended up doing in this film. I thought she gave such an incredible performance here. There was way more to her character than I really was expecting, and I, I really did appreciate that. The bonding between these two is just so great. They work so well together. It's easily one of the best parts of this film, for sure, is just seeing these two interact, and I think they did a really good job with that here, and I think the film is worth watching alone just for the performance from uh, these two amazing actors who really are just at the top of their game here. The rest of the cast, I think, also does a really incredible job. Even if they don't have a lot to do, I think they're all really great. Uh, specifically, Rachel House really impressed me as uh, the character of Terry. I can't say too much of who she plays, but I was very surprised when I saw that she was playing this character just because of how much of a transformation it was for her, and I, I thought she did such a uh, just really impressive job in this film. I really liked her performance here a lot. Felicia Rashad is always great, but here in particular, I think she gives a really strong performance. You know, you really do find yourself uh, understanding her character. She could have easily played a very, like, stereotypical mom, but she just feels very real, and I, I thought she was really great. Angela Bassett does a great job here. Even smaller performances like Don uh, Donnell Rawlings or something like that, every single actor here leaves an impression. Every single actor here, I think, gives a very strong performance, and it's easily one of the most uh, impressive and memorable things about this movie. Pixar always does a great job with casting here, but this film, they really just went all out and provide us with, I think, one of the most one of their most impressive and, I, I think, talented ensembles yet. But now we really have to get to the directing and the writing, because that is really what makes this film as special as it is. Look, re-watching all of the Pixar films, there is truly a commonality in all of them in Pete Docter, in that they really recognize the kind of director that he is. There are different directors within Pixar. You know, you have someone like, say, a Andrew Stanton, who does a really good job of telling these very meaningful stories and things like that, and he does a really good job with that, but but Pete Docter, I think, has always been the director to go to for these really deep and very sort of, I would say, 
um, philosophical films that just cut a lot deeper than most. And with this film, Doctor gives us his most daring project yet, because going into this film, I think the thing to know going into is that while it is for families, it's not really for kids in that way. I think this film is very similar to WALL-E, where I think kids are going to watch this, and they'll appreciate it, they'll like it, but they're not going to have the desire to rewatch it in the way that adults do. I think it's just going to connect to them a lot more. More. And I really do applaud Doctor for going there, because as an animation director, there's a temptation to try to appeal to kids, but Doctor doesn't want to do that. He really wants to make this the most authentic and the most mature it has ever been. And though this film is a lot of fun at points, it's a lot more... Um, Again, it, it's a lot more of a drama than you are expecting, and I think Doctor just did a really good job with that here. This feels like his most, um, this, this feels like him just working at his rawest he ever has. It, it really feels like this is the most real that Doctor has ever been. It's the most experienced he's ever been. It's the most confident he's ever been, and it's just so impressive with the way he was able to pull off the directing here. There were so many moments that had me laughing out out loud, but then there were some moments that also had me on the verge of tears, and it really is because of Doctor's directing here. Such an emotional roller coaster of a film, but he pulls it off with flying colors, and I was just absolutely loving his directing. If it was up to me, Doctor would absolutely get a Best Director nomination for this film at the Oscars, Golden Globes, you name it. I don't know if it's going to happen, but it very well should, because while Pete Doctor has always been, the, I think, the best director at Pixar, this film really solidifies him as perhaps the best animation director working today. I mean... I really don't think there's too much competition when it comes to this film. He really is directing on another level here that really just shows just how confident he is, but also just the boundaries he's willing to push. It's so impressive the places he's willing to go, and they and what's even more impressive is that they all really do work in this film. They all really do hits, and I just can't applaud him enough for his directing here. It's absolutely the best directing I've seen so far this year. I absolutely loved everything that he did here directing-wise, but his screenplay as well is something else that really just touched my heart in so many ways. And it's not just him, Mike Jones, and Ken Powers also uh, co-write this film, but the writing in this film is very hard to talk about because similar to another film I just reviewed, Promising Young Woman... This is another film we're going into. it. You don't really know what it's about. So I'm going to try to do my best to skirt around spoilers as much as I can. What I can say is that Soul is a lot of things, you know, and it touches upon a lot of issues that Pixar has before. The idea of an existential crisis, the idea of feeling relatively, you know, um, unmotivated in life or just not feeling satisfied in that way. Or the ideas of depression, the ideas of um, clinging onto a dream, but Soul is aiming for a lot more here. And throughout the film, you might think you know where it's going. You know, throughout the film, we really established the fact that Joe is head over heels in love with jazz music. This takes precedent over everything else in his life, whether it's his job as a teacher. While he appreciates that uh, jazz music is what's most important to him, or a relationship with a girl that he you know, uh, maybe wants to call. That doesn't matter as much as jazz music. Everything takes, everything takes a backseat to jazz in that way, and for a large portion of the film, you think the film is going to be this generic, you think the film's message is going to be basically this generic message of following your dreams, which is a good one. I mean, Pixar's told that message before, and they've done it very well, but that's not really what this film is going for, and that's what really, uh, I think, I admired so much about Soul. Without really spoiling much, this really is kind of about accepting life and in finding a way to enjoy life in that way and I think that is such an important message for so many and I think Soul just does such a great job at really uh, building to that here but the character of Joe Gardner as well I think is so well established because you can take Joe's passion for uh, jazz music and really apply it to anything I think throughout life you know we all get caught up into this one certain goal where we are so fixated on it, it's all we care about. We're worried that if we don't pursue this dream that 
nothing else is going to matter. Nothing else is going to work out for us. It's this or bust in that way. I myself have gone through that before, and I think that's going to be very relatable to a lot of people, but Joe is also someone that doesn't really recognize that he's doing that. You know, he's so focused on that goal and he really wants to return to this body but there are other things in his life that just aren't really going the way that he wants to he's a very flawed character in that way and he really does feel i think like the most um human character we've ever had in a pixar film not just because he is a human character but he just feels like someone that i think a lot of us can very much relate to in that way and then contrasting that with 22 someone who is seen as very cynical someone who's seen as very nihilistic she doesn't really have the same life experiences in the way that joe does you really do sympathize with her as well because you understand how she's kind of getting this look at you know, what life can be like, appreciating life in a way that she really hasn't before, exploring the simple joys in life, and the way that these two end up a lot similar than you think, I think is really impressive in terms of the writing. It really is a lot of the film, this very self-reflective type journey that is more akin to A24 films than a Disney Pixar film, and I know that sounds really pretentious, like, oh, it's just a family film, but Trust me when I say this feels like the most adult film that Pixar has ever done. There are... And again, I'm not saying a kid won't enjoy this because they will, but I think it reminded me of when I watched WALL-E as a kid. I appreciated it. I did. I enjoyed WALL-E, but it wasn't a film that I went back to a lot. But then... As I'm older now, rewatching it now, it leaves a much bigger impact on me. And I think Soul is going to be like that for a lot of kids now. I think they're going to watch it as an adult, and it's going to leave a much deeper impact. I think they'll still like it as a kid, but I think as an adult, it's just going to hit them in a way that other films just really didn't in terms of Pixar. And I think it speaks a lot to how this film is really written. I mean, it's, again, kids can watch it, but it clearly is made for older audiences. I think this film is meant to, is aimed to touch older audiences in that way, and I think it's very much going to. I think we've all been in a situation like Joe Gardner, but sometimes we also feel just as purposeless in life as, um... 22 does. I think we sometimes we feel like we're just kind of floating by like 22 does. We don't really feel like there's much direction in our life just like 22 does. So I think both of these characters are so deeply relatable um, for adults in that way. And that's why I truly do think this is the most mature film that Pixar has ever done just for that alone. There are a lot of very funny moments in this movie, many of which I cannot reveal to you because they're all involving spoilers, but... The story and the messages and what this film really gets into, I just think is a lot more emotionally complex than what Pixar usually does. And for some, it's not going to work. I've had some friends that told me that this movie just did not connect with them. And I understand that. I really do. Because it's much different than what you are expecting. It's a much different and... I think much more um, ethereal kind of feel than you really are expecting when it comes to this film. I mean, it really is something that is just so profound in that way that Pixar just hasn't really done. But for me, I was that much more impressed that they were able to pull this off, that they were able to make something that felt so adult. It really just felt like Pixar working at its highest level possible, and it showed that they're still able to surprise us. They're still able to shock us, and when you have an animation studio that's been going around since the early 90s, and they're still able to pull off something like this, they're still able to find ways to... Um, really just dazzle us, really shock us, and uh, make us really think about their messages and really leave this very visceral impact on us. I mean, how can I not be, um, you know, even somewhat impressed by what they're doing? How can I not want to applaud them for that? I think that is so impressive that they're able to pull that off. And the dialogue in this film as well, I think is just so great. There are so many scenes that have stuck in my head. And really, I think everyone does get a moment here. Yes, the film is very much about Joe and 22. They absolutely get the most screen time. But I don't feel like any character here feels underwritten. Even characters that only have like one scene in this movie, I feel like we get a 
base knowledge of who they really are. There's a great scene especially involving Joe and this barber that he goes to, and I can't say too much about it, but it might be the scene I've been thinking about the most in this movie. I don't know why it's left such an impact on me, but... It's a scene that I just really think a lot about, and it's, it's, it says a lot about embracing those simple things in life, which is something that Joe often doesn't, and I think they do a really good job with that here, and that's something I really did love when it comes to this film. And like I said, the actual plot of this movie I can't really get into. Yes, a lot of it is Joe going through the great before, but that's not the main sort of plot we're dealing with in this movie. There's another part of it that I can't really get into because the trailer actually did an excellent job of hiding it. And I've watched, there were three trailers released for this movie. None of them revealed what's actually going on here. And I was just at first very taken aback by it, but just also very impressed with how it turned out. And I think it really made the film that much stronger as a result. And as another film, I think you should go into, uh, knowing very little about because of it. So, yeah, I just, there's so much I love about this screenplay here. I think the dialogue is so great. I think the conversations that this film is having, I think what it's trying to say, all of that stuff is very important. All of that stuff is something that Pixar has touched upon before, but just never cut as deep as they really have here. It feels like this is them just being their most authentic, being their most mature, being their most emotionally raw and transparent, and it's really great to see them trying to touch people on a deeper level, and not just try to settle for mediocrity like I think some other lawn-running properties are these days. I think that's very impressive that Pixar is still trying to do that, and I think that's what makes this uh, screenplay that much more special in that way, but you also really do get a chance to understand who Joe is throughout this film, I think. I and I think that's something the film also does a really good job with, is just really getting you to understand uh, his struggles. While there's just, there's so many things I love about the story here. I really just could go on and on and on in terms of how much I love uh, the screenplay in this film. But the animation in this film is also at another level, because... Yes, obviously, you know, you've seen in the trailer the ways that this film really plays around with different animation styles, but that's not just that one scene. That's throughout the entire movie. When Joe's in The Great Before, a lot of the characters that he happens upon, they're not animated in the same way, and I thought it was really cool the way they blended in with the world. The world building of The Great Beyond itself is very impressive. Uh, it has a very distinct and it's very similar to Inside Out, but I don't think it is like derivative in that way it feels like it really is doing something different it's very colorful it's very uh vibrant and it's definitely one of the most memorable things about this movie and i think that's something that the film should absolutely be praised for is just how I think groundbreaking this animation really is for Pixar, but what also is groundbreaking, we've talked about this throughout a lot of Pixar's films, is just how real a lot of it looks. When Joe is in New York City, there are points where I forgot I was watching an animated movie because it just felt so real in that way. I mean, just the foregrounds and the certain images in the background, like, say, the rain or the subway, it all just looks like you could reach out and touch it, and it's real. But even the human characters themselves, I mean, this is the most, I think, accurate they've ever looked. And I've talked about this for so long. You look at the humans in Toy Story. They're not badly animated, but, like, they look like what you would expect humans to look like at that time in an animated film when they were just testing out this technology. And you look at them now, and they honestly look pretty similar to how a regular human would in a live-action film, and I truly don't know how Pixar is able to do it. They're just so cutting edge in that way. They're always on that next level in terms of animation, and it's just so impressive to look at. There's so many shots in this movie that are going to be ingrained in my mind forever. There's so many shots in this film that I think are just you know, you know that one perfect shot Twitter, I think they definitely belong on that for sure, and just in general, it's such a visual masterpiece uh, in so many ways, and it's, it's definitely, I think, maybe their best animation to date. I mean, I just, I can't get over how visually stunning this film is, and also just how visually arresting it is. I mean, it's a film that you truly are not going to be able to take your eyes off of just because of how stunning so many of the visuals are here, and I think that's something else this film just does such an incredible job with. Um, uh, but the score by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross is also a huge standout throughout this entire film. Yes, there are 
uh, musical tracks here that you would normally hear in a Pixar film, but it very much does sound like the work they've done for, say, Waves, or the work they've done for, um, you know, something like, you know, it, it, it definitely feels distinctly different than any other Pixar film. It has a very, like I said, indie sort of feel to it. It's really hard to describe, but it sounds more like the music they did for, say, Waves, or the music they did for, like, mid nineties and I think that's really impressive. Like, this is, again, an animated film, and yet their score is very distinctive of something you, you know, it doesn't really sound that different from what you would hear in Watchmen. And again, this is an animated film, and they were able to pull that off, and... I just loved it. I think the score really is kind of a character of its own. It's very calming at points and soothing, but again, it's also very electronic heavy. At points, it's very chaotic, and I definitely think it's one of their best scores yet. I still think Waves is probably their best in terms of scoring overall, but I think this is a very close second and absolutely should nab them a uh, best original score win. Not just a nomination, I really do think they should win uh, for best original score here because it is absolutely the best music that I have heard uh, this year, whether it's their music or the jazz soundtrack that really is a big part of this film as well. I think all of that is so well implemented, and just overall, I love the music throughout this entire film. And the editing, this definitely is a... Uh, much differently paced film than you are expecting, but I don't think a single second was wasted. There wasn't a single moment where I wasn't invested into what was going on. I found every scene to be the perfect length in that way, and I think the editing was just so well done in this film. There's three very distinctive acts in this movie, and I think that's what makes it so special in that way, and I think that's one of the things that really does work when it comes to this film. Overall, Soul is just such a different kind of experience. There are very few films... I think there there are films that uh, can have an impact on you. There are films that can get you very emotional, but there aren't films that can take you on this, uh, I think, philosophical of a journey and really make you feel like what you're watching is beyond a film and really have characters that touch your heart in the way that Joe and 22 do. I think both of these characters, so many people are going to relate to. It has some of the best voice acting Pixar's ever done, but it's also them working at their most emotionally mature yet. It's almost like they're making a movie for the adults that grew up with Pixar. This is their film. It has messages that Pixar has touched upon before, but it's cutting a lot deeper than it really ever has. Its actual message is one that a lot of people aren't going to expect. You don't realize that the film is delving into it until it reaches its end point, but I think the way that it does it is just so special and so profound and will leave such an impact on you, and it's going to touch people for so many years. It's just everything that Pixar does best. It is the textbook definition of Pixar working at their highest possible caliber. I think it is absolutely in the top half of Pixar. It's certainly one of the best things I've seen in a very long time. It might just be my favorite film of the entire year. And guys, I mean, I think I've gone on about long enough. Soul just absolutely floored me in every way possible. And I'm absolutely going to give it an A+. Plus. Look, I know that things are rough right now, and, you know, there are a lot of films that were delayed, but oh my god, this is just, the fact we were able to get this film in 2020 after everything we went through, I really do think is a gift. It really sucks that I couldn't see this in theaters, because it seems like a film that really was made for it, but just the fact I was able to see it alone, I think is uh, very much an achievement in that way, and I've heard a lot of conversations that this film is going to get the Best Picture nomination, and I, I really do hope hope that happens. It's only happened to a few Pixar films. I really hope this is one of them. I don't think there's a lot of competition, so I really do hope this does take that best picture win. Please see this film as soon as you can. I'm sure a lot of people have, um, but if you haven't, you need to jump onto Disney Plus right away. I think this is absolutely worth watching. Um, 
just to watch Soul alone. This is truly just such a unique and special kind of experience that only comes around in once of a lifetime, and it's it's very hard for me to articulate how I truly do feel about it without delving into spoilers, but I tried to skirt around it as best as I can. I hope I did a good job with that, but other than that, guys, in my review of Soul, the most guys saw this movie, all the truth thoughts in it, and guys, get excited. I only have a few movie reviews left uh, for this year. I do have, as expected, a very long catch-up review coming in the next couple days, but my best list is probably going to be out by either Thursday or Friday, so definitely look forward to that, and then, you know, we'll pretty much be done after that. I can't believe we're all right. We're finally at the end of 2020. We finally did it, guys. It felt like it was never going to happen, but we finally did it, and I'm very happy uh, that we did. But other than that, guys, in my review, hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you guys in my next video, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.